with Power Talk with Gene Adrian. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday, and welcome to Power Talk. And I hope everybody survived the Thanksgiving holidays and didn't have too many family embroilments and entanglements and didn't eat too much or gain too much weight like I did. Um, <laughs> so hopefully it's all good for everybody. And now we're on the road, the slide to Christmas. So yay, that's all I can say. And I'm just so excited about tonight's show. My guest tonight is, is very unique. Um, her name is Amy Greason. She's a pharmacist from North Carolina. She comes from a line of pharmacists. And so that's what she studied to be. But then her life took a turn because she has devoted her, her I guess, I don't want to say her spare time because I think she, um, you know, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, she devotes her life to searching in the jungles of the world uh, like Madagascar and the jungles of Brazil, working with the indigenous people to find their solutions for modern day illnesses, things that we don't know about, things that we have lost over the ages because nobody's connected with these people, mainly because nobody could connect with them because they're so isolated. And she's done so many trips and um, she's learned so much and she's produced some amazing movies about her work. Her website is healingseekers.com, and now she's written a book about this. Her book is called And the Silent Spoke, and when I heard about this book, it was like, I got to have her on the show, so welcome, Amy. Thank you, Jean. It's such a pleasure to be with you. Uh, well, again, I have, I have just the utmost respect for you, so this is quite an honor for me. Well, ditto. It works both ways. So what you're doing I mean, you know, you do your day, your day job, but, you know, what you're doing in um, the work that you are, are putting forth in the world to help us to find cures for diseases that we don't know how to cure is just amazing. And, you know, uh, and now to have written this book about it. So I just start at the beginning, Amy. I, this is all about you. So tell everybody how you got on this path and how it ended up in a book and how they can get your book. Oh, thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, um, I've always loved the outdoors, uh, but when I went to pharmacy school, I graduated thinking that the majority of the pharmaceuticals I was gonna be dispensing uh, all were created in a laboratory. Uh, and then I began to realize how many of our pharmaceuticals actually have their recipes, if you will, the novel compounds that came from nature. Um, so it was back in the 90s, I had an opportunity to travel with a friend of mine who was in the forefront of natural medicine. And uh, the first trip was down to the Amazon, absolutely fell in love. I mean, fell in love. And, and I, I, I know you've been to places like this, but when you leave, you feel like a part of your soul has, is, is dying because you, you, I guess you're just that connected. Uh, so I immediately fell in love with the jungles. And uh, fast forward about five, six, seven years, I kept seeing so many people that were important in my life, people I'd known my entire life, uh, people that we were trying to help with pharmaceuticals. And at that point, I was doing a lot of herbal and botanical medicines too. Uh, and, 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 and they greatly improved the quality of life in a lot of ways, uh, but they didn't cure. Mm. And so I knew that the cures were out there. Uh, I knew that we also had pretty much stopped looking for them. And so I just decided that I would go out and try and find them myself. So it was quite naive, Jean, and a <laughs> steep, steep learning curve. Lots of failures, lots of mistakes, lots of failures, but... Fast forward uh, 12, 12 years later, 13 years later, and uh, we're, still, we're still going strong. So it's been beautiful. But the, the book is, is a lot about the stories of these treks over 20-some years. Mm -hmm. um, and, and our treks, we go to some of the more remote, isolated regions of the world. And uh, that's for a lot of reasons. One, we want to go where they have those intact indigenous cultures that mm -hmm. have not shared their outside medicine before. Uh, right now we're in a race against time. 
because uh, as we know the environment is is just being destroyed and is disappearing at just a horrific rate uh, and so we wanted to to get to those areas as quickly as as possible and so the book is really a lot of my favorite stories uh, but it's it's and I know like with your shows and the things that you've talked about it's sometimes those those times when you go through the most difficult um, situations you have the, the the hurdles and obstacles that are in they just seem like they they're just impossible to to get around or to get over and uh, these stories ended up being some of those times in my life that were the most difficult mm. uh, the, the the times that you know I felt many times that you know I could have just fallen on my knees and cried and given up mm. and uh, and so it's more of a, a a spiritual walk in a lot of ways because you can't experience life without going within yourself and understanding and growing and becoming and and in that process thankfully have more empathy towards other people and for a greater purpose outside of yourself and so by the time the book was finished so it took six years I don't know what that says about me as a writer but it took six years Uh, but at the end um, that that was really the the, the big thing was the personal journey through Mm -hmm. it all well, I've got so many questions. I don't even really know where to begin. Um, the first one, I, I suppose, is how do you get funding for these excursions? This has got to cost a lot of money. Yeah, they, they do. We, for, gosh, until 2016, for the nonprofit for Healing Seekers, mm-hmm. uh, 2016 was our expedition to the Congo. It was a two-month trek. It was the most expensive and the most intense trek that we have done to date. Uh, that trek was the first time ever that we had a funded trek. Uh, and that was due in large part from a hugely successful GoFundMe. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was initiated by two donors that came forward and just put an you know, unsolicited amount of money. Mm-hmm. And so it was a surprise. Up until 2016, for Healing Seekers, um, Gina pretty much worked two jobs mm-hmm. to pay for that. Yeah, uh, and so the the film team and such uh, that 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 came out of my pocket. Um, but we also have a for profit, which is uh, the research of the plants, mm-hmm. and that began in 2008. Uh, and uh, with that. There was just either one or two of us that went, and so I either paid for that as well, or I had a business partner that also contributed uh, up until 2014, and then we had uh, investors. And so we've been blessed with some of the most soulful, beautiful investors. I would love for you to meet them. You just, uh, they're just, I still get everything we're doing, and it's just always the highest purpose for what's 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 going to be good for the world, what's going to be good for others. And uh, I, I could not have been blessed more. That's amazing. And I guess my second um, big question has to do with the, um, the danger of it all. Um, you know, I mean, I thought my idea of a third world country is Peru. Okay. (laughs) So, um, yeah. And where you go, they, they've never even heard English before. In most cases, I think Mm -hmm. many of them are warring tribes, um, maybe even headhunters, you know, uh, uh, and that's going to be very, uh, dangerous. How do you get around that? That that is always the biggest concern, uh, and and you always have incidents. Mm-hmm. There's always on every trip one, two, or three of you are sick with something mm-hmm. at some point. Uh, we've been very fortunate that we haven't had any serious injuries, uh, but we have had some very um, close calls in a lot of ways. 
And I don't want to give away the stories in the book because when I say they're my favorite stories, they really are yeah. the most adventurous and, and the most um, frightening at a lot of times. Um, but one, we were on the Highlands Highway in, in Papua New Guinea. And, and just to give you an idea, uh, we had two armed guards in the vehicles with us because uh, there's so many robberies that mm-hmm. occur along this road and people are attacked. Um, we were very fortunate we did not get attacked. Uh, and, uh, and unfortunately, a friend of mine, Colin, who was a photographer and explorer out of New Zealand, he and his team were attacked uh, mm. with machetes one time. But, uh, but then I think the, the, the most frightening and the expedition that took the longest for me to get over was the Congo. And it was the most difficult jungle I've ever been in, in in my entire life. And I've been in jungles 14, 15, 16 times in my life. Uh, But multiple swarms of bees um, several times a day, every single day. Uh, The ants were unreal. They just, you know, consumed everything that wasn't moving. Um, We ran out of water. We got lost. Um, so the jungles were tough, but when we were out of the jungle, we were picked up by police five times and put in jail twice. And, and you know, if you've seen, like, Locked Up Abroad, I, I, I've only seen a little bit of that. Yeah. There is a lot of uh, truth in, in those things. It is one of the most terrifying things you could ever imagine is being arrested and you don't have a voice, Um, there's no translation, and there's a lot of yelling and screaming for hours and hours and hours. You have no idea what you've done. Uh, And and so for us, here again, we were extremely blessed uh, because the the, the president of the country came to our aid and protected us for the entire track. Wow. And uh, and that's almost unheard of, I realize, but, uh, you know, it was just... Uh, it seems like for, for us that uh, we know that the, the work that we're doing is what we're meant to do. And no matter what the outcome is, if we'll find a cure for something next year or five years or 10 years from now, or our educational materials will impact 100 kids or 1,000 or 10,000 kids, um, you, you, you have to follow your passion and you have to listen to that call that's deep within your soul for sure and i think that when you do uh, you are protected in many ways and sometimes it doesn't mean that you're not going to get strife or that you're not going to get arrested or you're not going to have terrifying experiences uh, but if you keep putting one foot in front of another um, you're going to be a better person when it's all said and done absolutely this is all about destiny isn't it it is Yes, yes, it is. What a beautiful thing to say, but it is. And there have been so many times that uh, literally uh, on my knees and I think I'm giving up, you know, another rejection or whatever the reason is, the results didn't come back like we hoped, blah, blah, blah. And every single time that there was that, just that second that, I'm, I, this is too much. I'm going to go back. I'm going to just be a, a regular pharmacist. I'm going to go back to retail and I'm going to have my little salary and I'm going to just live a normal life. Every single time something will happen. And it's almost like the universe is shaking you and saying, no, no child, you are not, you're not meant to walk that path. You've got your own path to walk. I I completely identify with that. I mean, you know, and, and there are times when, you know, this, this path that I've chosen, which is so different from the mainstream gene from, you know, before 2002. And, you know, sometimes I get called on it and I want to back down and I want to maybe play a little bit smaller and I just can't, the universe won't let me, you know, um, it would be easy. It would be easy to do, wouldn't it? And and it's 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 just um, and in those times when you feel like you don't have enough strength, uh, that's when like my partner, my parents, my teammates, especially on these treks, uh, your teammate 
teamwork is everything. Yeah. And, and the moments when one individual may be fighting their demons, you know, the others are there in full support. Yeah. And, and it's only because of those others that you know, you're, you're able to keep moving forward. Uh, so a lot to be grateful for, for, for mm-hmm. other people in your life. And, oh, yeah. 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 So where's your next um, journey going to be? We are optimistic that we're going to have some really good results uh, from some tests that researchers are doing with some plants that we're working with uh, several villages with now. And so optimistically, we're going to be going back to Papua New Guinea, Mm -hmm. possibly Madagascar. But the best is like the next big dream. Uh, Mm -hmm. The new destination is Indonesia, around the Borneo, around uh, in, in, in that area. But the horrible destruction of the Amazon that's going on now mm. is going on there. It's going on all over the world. Yeah. It, um, and, and, and Gina may be wrong, and I, I may be exaggerating a little bit, but I think that if you magnify what's going on in the Amazon, five, ten times, maybe more, that's what's happened in Madagascar. Mm-hmm. And so I read a statistic like NASA has reported that over 90% of the natural forest in Madagascar are, are, are gone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we know that when that happens, not only do you lose the species of life and uh, the, the vitality of the land, but you also have a, a resurgence or a surgence of, of disease and things that uh, hunger. And you know, I mean, it just, I, I, I'm saddened uh, by what has happened and I, I try to curb the fears and remain optimistic, but sometimes it's hard to remain optimistic when you see some of the things. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure. Um, because I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not as exposed to it as you are, because it's not my passion. Uh, so I'm not researching it and looking at it constantly. And quite frankly, I don't turn the TV on. And I don't read the news. So I'm pretty isolated. Um, but I, I know, I know that it's there. I, mean, I know that it's happening. And I know that you're absolutely right. And I have to believe because of the cycle of life, that somehow or another we're going to get through this and you know maybe um it'll be plants that you've already found that create whatever the missing link if you will right Um, and up to a cure that's 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 what we hope for and then there's many levels to that first of all you're you're bringing something in and first i'll say that um, now, we do bring in plants that don't have indigenous use behind them, mm-hmm. uh, but the plants, which are the majority, we work very closely with healers and elders in, in, in these remote areas, and uh, we are quite close friends. But um, when you find something that's of interest, there is uh, encouragement to grow more crops. And so we work with them, uh, you know, financially helping them to do this, but under their own terms. Uh, and I never go in and tell a village or an elder or a chief what to do. I, this is all what they want to do. Right, yeah. Uh, but if you give them an incentive to grow those crops, then they're going to be less likely to sell that land to a logger or to something else. And uh, case in point, there was an area in Papua New Guinea that we've been trying to go back to for four or five years now. And we were all ready on the private little missionary plane. They were going to take us in, drop us off. And they received word that there was a lot of um, warfare going on. And it was warfare between the local villages and the oil and gas company. And what happened was this oil and gas company came in and they worked with the villages and the people in the village eagerly sold their land because people, uh, according to our guides in in Madagascar, uh, or I'm sorry, in in Papua New Guinea, they want to be developed. They've heard of societies outside their country that are 
developed and, you know, have these materialistic things. And so they want these things as well. Long story short, so they sell their land, get the money. The money disappears quickly. And then their land is gone, is destroyed, and they become very angry. And so they start fighting the members of the oil and gas company. And it's ugly, Gene, their deaths. Sure. I, don't, I can't remember how many deaths occurred, but there was a lot of, uh, there, I, I don't know, I'm going to, it seems like there was like 10, 12, 13 deaths. Wow. So fast forward two years later, we go back and we're like, okay, cannot wait to see our friends there. We hope they're safe, you know, get ready to go. Same thing happens again. Cannot fly into the area. And this time, what we're told by our guides is that it's the tribal fighting because now there's less land. And so where the villages used to have all this land and they lived, you know, in, in balance, if you will, I'm sure there was there were warfare going sure. on for, for properties and stuff. But, uh, but now with the, the diminished amount of land, then... They were fighting over the land that remained. Mm. And uh, it, it's it's just sad we've yet to go back to that area. And um, But that's those, those are the things that we've seen. And I'm sure that other people who are involved with uh, a lot of these countries a lot more intimately than we are with our plants and stuff are probably seeing twice the things that we're seeing. Wow. And, you know, and this research that you're doing is so important. Um, I have a, a really close friend who was recently diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. That's and so for hard. so long, that has just been a death sentence, you know. Right. Um, and there's a huge trial taking place in the Netherlands right now where they're thinking, well, maybe this cancer has been caused by parasites. I mean, this is something Paul de Clark was trying to tell everybody 20, 30 years ago, right? What? They are using dog deworming medication on these patients, and it's shrinking the tumors. Oh, how beautiful. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, so we don't know where the next major breakthrough is going to be. No, no, you know, we and, don't. We, we, we really don't. There's so much that we don't understand. And, you know, it's the old adage, but really the older I get, the more I realize how little I know. Sure. And, and um, but, you know, when you said that, it's, it's uh, I'll tell you the story. So we were with an elder and uh, in a village. And uh, after about the fifth day, he took me to the side with the translator and said, you know, I want to show you this special tree that we have. And I said, great. So it was either going to be like two or three days walking, or we had, of course, our SUV off-road vehicles. And so we, we drove a large part of that way uh, through the terrain. We got to this tree, and uh, I'll say we got to the area close to the tree, and he asked us to stand by the vehicle. And he disappeared, Gene, like in you know, the woods. He was gone for mm -hmm. five minutes or so. And then he came back. And through the translator, he said, I had to go to the tree and ask the spirit of the tree permission yes. before I could bring you. Yes. And so we were allowed to go. And uh, it was this magnificent tree. I mean, it was just enormous. And you could tell, very old. And uh, we were standing there. And our main guide for this part of the trek, his wife is from this village. In fact, her father is the chief of this village, which is why we went to this sure. village. And he said that he had been around that tribe and that village for maybe 30 years and never knew of the tree. No one in the village knew of the tree. But the beautiful thing about it is uh, in this area, there's a lot of oral cancers. Now, villagers don't call it cancer, but whenever somebody is sick, they go to a missionary hospital and they are told they have cancer. Right. And so AIDS is also very very prominent in this area. And uh, so the elder was saying when 
a person has the cancer, when a person has the AIDS, uh, when they have things that all of our other medicine does not cure, we come to this tree and this tree cures it. And, you know, it just gave me chills. And I thought, you know, it, it's, there's so much knowledge and there's so many things out there that we have no concept of. Uh, you know, our Western medicine, we like to test, we like to do research, we like to do this, um, which is very important. And, and as we know, in many ways, uh, the other reason that um, is because, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around, Jean, but um, that's okay. When we went back, uh, we were in, in one area, we were looking for a specific tree. And it took us three days to find the tree because the land was just logged and barren. It was almost like a desert. And it used to be this lush, green jungle. And so uh, there are very few trees left. And, and I dare say it, it, the tree may be extinct by now. We're not sure. We were there in 2018, so a year. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think at that point, if you find something that cures pancreatic cancer or that cures MS or, or Alzheimer's or something like that. Uh, and you go back and there's no plants and there's no trees and you can't reproduce those. Um, you know, I think the only way is, is you hope that you know, maybe somebody can grow those in a controlled environment, uh, which would be wonderful. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's just, um, there's a lot of things out there and we have barely tapped the earth's healing properties. We just oh, don't sure. and, and maybe this is where energy medicine is going to come in. Yes. Because now when, when they would take the person to the tree and the person would be healed, did they partake of the tree in any way or did they just be in proximity with it? They did. They actually took um, part of the bark mm -hmm. and sometimes some of the leaves. Okay. So it depended on what they were fighting and how strong they needed to uh, to do that. But the energy medicine, absolutely. I have a dear friend, Heath, that teaches me all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it is the energy medicine, as you know so well, uh, is, is so powerful. And, and when people who are very conservative um, say, oh, that's just a bunch of woo-woo or whatever, but mm -hmm. to me... till they get sick. Ex well, that, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, Prayer uh, yeah. is energy medicine. Absolutely. The greatest energy in the world, which is love, is energy right. medicine. And I've often said, if you could bottle love, uh, there would be no diseases. There would be no, you know, it's, it's just it's just that powerful. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you don't even have to bottle it. I mean, one of the things that, that I have found in my work is that you can just ask God to give you the frequency of the bark of that tree mm. in the proper dosage Love and, it. and it will happen because our intention is so powerful, you know, but you got to believe it, you know, absolutely. So. And, and you, you are of course a healer. And when I've talked to healers in other parts of the world uh, and, and some of these 70, 80 year olds, uh, you can ask them, they will not even begin to treat someone unless they believe they can be. Uh, and, and that first time on a lot or is, is um, more of a spiritual healing. Yes. It's a prayer, the spiritual healing. If that doesn't work, then they go to the plant medicines or the ceremonies or the rituals or, or, mm -hmm. or combine the two. Well, I mean, disease starts in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual body first, and then the mental body, and then the emotional body. And lastly, it appears in the physical body. Right. Right. So, you know, we have to work it out that way. Right. You know, isn't that beautiful, though? Yeah, oh. it is. It is. And everything's possible. And we've run out of time. So, oh. <laughs> so I'm tell disappointed. I could talk to you for hours. Oh, as I well. know. Me too. Me too. So tell everybody about your book and the silent spoke. Where can they get it? It is available on Amazon. Uh, it is also available on Kindle on Amazon, uh, as well as uh, your local bookstores, Barnes and Noble, uh, etc. 
Wonderful. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank and you. Um, and so how can people keep up with you, Amy, so that um, they can find your GoFundMes and they can support you in your work? Great. I personally am on Facebook. Mm -hmm. The book and The Silent Spoke also has a Facebook page. Healing Seekers has a Facebook page, uh, as well as our for-profit research company, Natural Discoveries, uh, all have, cool. and, and websites as well. Absolutely Thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much for what you're doing in the world and for having the courage to keep doing it despite adversity. Oh. It's just amazing. Thank you. Powerful. Thank you. I'm honored. So honored to be with you. Oh, thank you. And next week, visitors and watchers and viewers and listeners, wherever you are, we're going to be talking about sugar. Um, and my guest is going to be uh, the woman who's written this book. Her name is Rena Greenberg. The book is called The Easy Sugar Breakup because sugar is at the root of so many diseases. And it's very important for us to clear that out of our system and start maintaining our health without using sugar as part of that. So catch me next week. And until then, remember, people who take responsibility for their lives create the reality they desire. I love you all. Ciao.